which you have to deal with, whether this part is part of yourself or part of somebody you carry with you, somebody with whom you haven't got a situation finished. Right now, we are in a studio, and we just talked about the stage fright. As Gestaltrap is exclusively interested in the now, and our aim is to learn to cope with whatever happens. And right now what happens is a certain amount of stage fright. So let's sample a bit. Will you take the hot seat? And to tell me how you experience your stage fright. Um, my hands are very cold and wet. Yeah. Very wet. And I have this little <laughs> paper. <laughs> Can you imagine doing this to me? Tearing you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Come tear me apart. <laughs> I'm scared to death. I'm scared of you, I now guess. put me in that chair. Can I talk to you? Yes. Uh, I think... I guess I'm afraid because I think I'll do something to myself because I don't... I know you aren't going to do anything to me. I... But I really am afraid of you. Okay, now switch over to the camera. Say this to the camera. <laughs> I really am afraid of you. <laughs> now, change. Play the camera. Sit down here and play the camera. What would the camera answer? <laughs> if you had some words, some feeling as camera, what would you say? Talk, talk to that girl that was so frightened. I see you sitting there. I see you nervous. I see you unsure. I see you... I see you as okay. Now be yourself again. What would you say? Go on with the dialogue. I feel better. I'm not so uh, concerned right now. I feel more at ease. Yeah. You see, this always happens. If you assimilate some of the projection and you realize what you're dealing actually only with a fantasy, something you invest, and if you take back what you have given up, whatever energy or experience you have disowned, given to the world, and it becomes your own, then you grow. You integrate this foreign material. All right, let's... Will you try this? Change the hot seats. My hands are very cold and wet. And um, I'm going inside very fast right there. Uh, but otherwise I feel uh, supernaturally calm. Uh, supernaturally calm? Yeah. So it might be that your calmness is phony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, now close your eyes. Withdraw into your body. What do you feel physically? Hammer, 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 hammer. Right there. Can you exaggerate this hammer, hammer, hammer? Make noises. <laughs> oh. That sure this. feels better. <laughs> He's still playing with the paper. Talk to the paper. <laughs> Paper, I'm still winding you up. <laughs> Won't let you go. And my hands are sweaty and, and they're shaking a little bit. And uh, I'm getting hot. Do you, hear your, do you hear your voice? Yeah, I'm getting scared. <laughs> of what? Of all those people out there watching me. Tell the still there. I'm scared of all you people out there watching me. Now change position. You're one of the people watching you. Say, I am seeing you. 
I'm seeing you, and you should be scared. Especially if, like, my parents are watching or something like that, and I say something, and it may hurt you. Okay, she seats again. Talk big. I've got a lot of hostility against the whole crowd and my I parents. I express your hostility. Express it on this piece of paper. Well, I'd like to wind them all up. I mean... They tell this to us. I'd like to wind you all up. Now, in this course, I noticed that you have disowned your eyes. Instead of having eyes, the eyes are in the outside world, and they're looking at you. Yeah, right. Now, could you try to discover your own eyes and tell us what you see? Use your eyes now. What do you see? And I see that I'm scared. That's not what you see. That's what you imagine. Well, all I see then are cameras and yeah, and shapes and darkness. Uh huh. Do you and see just them? people sitting there? Ah, you're waking up. <laughs> yeah, this is what I call the mini satori. It's in contrast to the great satori, the great waking up. This is a little <laughs> waking up suddenly. One wakes out of a trance, like you're being persecuted by the eyes of the world. Yeah. All right, let's deal with your stage fright. I have cold, sweaty hands, and my feet, too. my toes are separated from my body. I can't feel them at all. Talk to them. Toes, why are you so cold and dirty? I feel the sandals shiny and smooth. Yeah. I want to crack my toes. I feel confined by the sandals. Now let your toes talk to the sandals. I feel confined by you. Let me go, sandals. I Again. want to move. Again. Let me go. Scream it. Let me go! Again. Let me go, sandals! Now, the way to cope with dreams in gestalt therapy is this. We consider dreams an existential message, not a residual of unfinished situation or traumatic things or wish fulfillment. And we have to find out what is the message we get from our dreams. There's something else in the dreams that has to be understood. A dream is a fragmentation of our personality. Now, by fragmentation, I mean this. If I have three pieces of wood and I put them together into a triangle, then the triangle forms a gestalt, a coherent one. Now, if they are again taken apart, they are fragmented, they are all over. So much of our personality is fragmented. It's there. But it's not available because the different parts are separated from each other. Now, Gestalt therapy is not an analytical but integrative method. And the main thing is, if you work with dreams, not to interpret, not to play interpretation on intellectual games. I believe any interpretation is a therapeutic mistake. Any interpretation is an interference of the therapist's opinion on the patient. So the patient has to do all the dirty work by himself. And the steps we do is that we first ask, will you tell us the dream? Yeah. I was in a long, uh, dark, cold place, possibly a cement bunker or sewer underground with my children. None of us were wearing clothes, and we had some scuba diving equipment or some kind of hoses. and. I knew I had to get out, and I had to get them out, and I got very angry at them and started hitting at them and yelling at them, but it didn't make... It, I, I never could contact their flesh. I hit them very, very hard. Uh -huh. Now, you know already what you, uh, one of the extension messages. You avoid 
getting in touch and hitting the children. Can you see that? In my life, I hit them a lot. And in the dream, you? I don't. I probably. I don't feel very good about hitting them hmm. when I do. Now, this is the first step. The second step is I make you now a stage director. Mm -hmm. Will you set the stage for the dream? Um, and talk um, in the present tense. Build up the stage in fantasy. Okay. I am here with my children. There's the sewage. Okay. I'm in a cold, dark place, and the walls are cold on either side of me. And my kids, I think, are ahead of me, but they aren't going fast enough. And we, are in, we have hoses with us that are tangling us up, uh, rubber things. And I say, come on, let's go. And I'm hitting them, and 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 hitting them. And I really just never get through to them. I'm hitting a vacuum. Now play the child. And talk to your, to your mother. Oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to move. And you certainly are making up a storm, and she's not going to move. And you can knock yourself out, and I'm not going to do a damn thing. I'm going to go exactly to that home door. Okay. Oh, I can hear And it stopped there, or I forgot it there. Yeah. All right, now, let's have a real encounter with your child now. Mm -hmm. Shall I take that yeah, seat? Take and that seat. Uh, you can't touch me. You can't hurt me. You sure are making a fool of yourself, yelling and hitting. And I'm going to go at my own pace. You can't rush me. What would you answer? You have to get out of here. I know what's good for you, and I have to get you out of here, and that's the most important thing. Listen to me and look at me. Thank you. Unless you really hit me, you won't get anything. You can just stir up as much mud as you want, but you're not going to get to me until I'm just ready for it. Now, can you talk to me like your children? As yourself. I don't want to do it. Just leave me alone. Go away and stop bothering me. Now be your own age and talk in the same spirit, but express yourself as you are to me. In, you just leave me alone. You can't touch me. You can't do a thing to me. You can strike out. You can look away. You can be bored. It really doesn't make any difference. And I pick up the fact that I'm going to go like that. What kind of person are you playing now? What kind of role? It's a mixture. A little... It's very haughty. Yeah. And it's a little tiny bit seductive. Also. Yeah. The dream was so powerful when it was happening. Yeah. Um, it was, it had the strongest physical response I've ever had from a dream, an unpleasant one. And I don't know why it isn't even stronger, why I'm not going into orbit with it, you know. Maybe it's such a stalemate. All right. Uh, do you feel anything of this still now? I can summon it up. I'll tell you why I thought the dream was so important to me after I had it. Because when I get very angry, I turn often that anger, or I used to turn it in just like that. And you re I mean, I'm not really going to hurt myself, but I tried as hard as I could. Sometimes I would even pinch myself, but I was never going to do break this it. to me. Now, notice when you do this, you hold your breath. Yeah, oh, it's real holding breath. Yeah. yeah. Now do it again and breathe at the same time. <sighs> Go on breathing and make noises. Yeah, what do you feel now? That I 
have more power. Yeah. See, now you have reowned some power from the dream. In the dream, you were impotent. Yeah. Now we have taken some of the power of the children away from them and give it back to you. Yeah. I think I lash out at them and then I take it back immediately into yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, will they get it tomorrow? <laughs> Thank you. So even if you don't consider the whole dream, if you do it on your own, if you dream and you just play the different parts and understand, uh, at least try to confront each other, have a lot of internal encounters until Again, you reassimilate more and more of your disowned material. In this case, your power and all what you did to yourself by doing it to me, you became more real. Because this is the essence of Gestalt therapy. We want to change paper people into real people. This is why we discard all opinion playing and uh, interpretation and so on. So who wants to work on a dream next? Yeah. In order to make a shortcut, let's do something on the surface phony. Uh, tell your dream and intersperse it with each sentence, this is my existence. In order to understand this is not just a scene. It's the basic structure of your existence. Then I should speak in the now for this dream, I think. I am on top of a tall tower. This is my existence. I have to interrupt you because there's something, some expression going on. Don't interrupt it, please. Uh, tell me what you're doing with your hands. I don't know. Hmm? Let your right hand talk to your left hand. Uh, I'm rubbing you. I feel, it feels good to press hard, to squeeze those fingers. I, I like to squeeze you. Say this again. Too. I like to squeeze you. Now, what does the left hand answer? I'm passive. I, I, I like that. I, I feel good. Now, we don't know yet to what degree we find here a right-left split. The right hand, the right side, usually expresses the male aggressive motoric uh, practical side. The left is the emotional, the female, the uh, receptive side. So, all right, now let's go back to the dream. Um, I'm on top of a tower, and the tower is going around. It's a tall tower, like the tower at the World's Fair in Seattle. And it's spinning around and around and around. Yeah, can you see, this is my existence. This, I'm this is my existence. I'm spinning around and around and around. I'm thrown off the edge, and I'm clinging over the side. And this is my existence. And I'm, I'm hanging on to the railing, and I'm falling, and I know I'm falling. I don't believe you. Can you say it again? Maybe I can believe you. Now then. Try again. I'm clinging to the side of the railing. Have you really experienced this? Yes. Good. And I'm clinging and holding on as hard as I can, and I'm calling for help. How? Oh. I'm calling, help, help me, and I'm, I'm calling my husband who's sitting inside, and he doesn't hear me. And uh, my children are there someplace also. Now put your yeah. husband in that chair and call him for help. Bob, 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 come and help me. Bob, I'm falling. Come and help me. Please come and help me. 
Can you hear your voice? Can you hear your voice? Say it again and see whether this your voice expresses what you feel. Bob? Come and help me, Bob. Come and help me. I need your help, Bob. I need you. Say this again. I need you. Again. I need you. Again. I need you. What does he answer? I don't mean not to hear you. I just didn't hear you. I just didn't notice. I just didn't notice. I want to help you. Take your seat again. What would you say to him? I'm mad because you don't hear me. It seems like you don't care. I do care, Bobby. This is. I do care, Bobby. Okay. I do care, Bobby. Change again. <laughs> I, I want to embrace them. Do this. Okay. Listen here. Did you get the message? I don't, I don't know. But you understand, yeah. there's something I wrong with your communication. Yes. And you play the blaming game. He is yes. to be blamed. Yes. It could be that you don't know how to touch him, how to communicate with him. Well, there's so much more in the dream. You are desperate clinging and so on. But I think we are want to finish up. At least get you cut a little bit on the stream, right? Yeah. We started out being involved with the situation here, and everyone had stage fright. Now, when some other gestalt emerges, like the dream work, you get so involved in your own happening then the background recedes. You become real in a different way. Now one could take one dream and take up every little item, not just the different people, but the different things. And this would be enough to achieve a complete integration. But what mostly happens is that after a dream is worked through and some of the fragmented pieces integrated, we get another dream that shows more what's going on and already simplifies. You see, especially when you have these nightmares, which are the real frustration, self-frustration dream, and you stop frustrating yourself, you stop interfering with yourself, then you start to blossom out and be in touch with the world and so on. So let's have another try at dreams. Will you come? Now again, go back into the dream. As long as you dream, the dream seems to be absolute real. The most absurd dream appears to be real, and this is absolutely justified because what you dream is real. It's a different language. So what is your dream? I was in a department store, like Macy's, but it, 
just uh, talk a little in the present tense. Enter the dream. I'm in a department store, but it doesn't... It doesn't have any limit to the floors. It goes on and on and on. You can go up the escalator. I was... My mother was waiting outside in the cold, and she was hunched over in a black coat. And I went in to go shopping, and... You see that you immediately kill the aliveness of the dream, and... Uh, well, I don't yet expect from you a real cooperation, and also the dream confirms this. But at least try to stay in the present tense. I'm in a department store. Your mother is waiting outside. My mother is waiting outside. She's in a black coat. I go inside. What are you doing with your left hand? I'm chopping my leg. You're chopping your leg. Go on chopping your leg. Who else do you want to chop? My mother. No, chop her. And at the same time, it indicates that your mother is your leg. All right, now, let's start with this little fragment of the dream. If you were this department store, what kind of existence would you lead? You know this department store. I am the department store. Yeah. I'd be big. I am big. I am big. And? I have many things inside my stomach. I hold everything, everything in the world. It's all there. Anything you want, you can find inside me. There are books and records and furniture, and I have clothes. And I have now, can you listen to your voice? Can you play your voice? Like an instrument? Ah. It's not how, how I hear your voice. I hear your voice. Ah, 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 ah. I can't hear it. That's right. You don't hear your own sweet voice. You don't hear. All right. Now, be your mother. Mommy, Julie, Julie, where are you? What are you doing? Why don't you call me? Go back. Because I'm not you. I'm not you. You don't know. You don't have to know everything that's happening in my life. Change sheets. But I'm all alone now. I don't have anybody anymore. Now go on writing in the script between you and your mother. Uh, I have to be myself. I want to tell you, because you never listen. But I have to live my own life. I'm not you. Does she hear you? Does she hear you? What? I don't think you're me. I, I don't expect you to be like me. I have my own life. You know that. But... But you're there. You won't go away. Let's do something phony. Let your mother go into the department store. See what she, she would experience there. Play your mother in the department store. Well, Judy, look. Here's a nice dress. Don't you think this would look good on you? It's just will make you look older. Uh, well, well, let's see what size it is. Oh, it's a, it's a nine. Do you think a nine would fit? Okay, now you are, you are allowed to talk back to her, or talk with her when she says, wouldn't this fit, and so on. 
But I don't like that. I, I don't like the color. But you, what color do you want? I want red. But you look terrible in red. You know you don't look good in red. Are you aware how much you, more alive you are when you play your mother? <laughs> yeah? Then your voice at least has some kind of quality. Now comes the $64 question. How old are you? 21. 21. And what do you need a mother for? I don't need a mother. Just tell her that. I don't need you. I don't need you. What does she answer? I know, but you know we're here just in case of an emergency. You know where to come. Now go on, writing the script. But in case of an emergency, I want to be able to do it myself, you know? I don't want to have to need you for an emergency. Yeah, I know, but you know, just in case, if you need money, you know, something like that. <laughs> but I don't need money. I'm doing all right by myself. And if I didn't need it, I'd find a way myself to get it. Now, you're always talking more or less defensively. How could you, if you don't need your mother, how come you don't get rid of her? I don't know how. Now, I'll give you an um, ideal Fritz. Put him in that chair and ask him how to get rid of your mother. Get, he is your own psychiatrist. Fritz. I've thought about this a long time. I'm really hung up on my mother. And I think you can tell me how. Now play him. <laughs> Make me your mother. <laughs> I am your mother. What will you do to me? <laughs> Now. I killed my mother. <laughs> yeah? Okay, now play the dead mother. What do you experience as the dead mother? Pain. Express it. Have you any idea what happened? I don't have an idea. Come, you take that, that chair. You still need your mother. Otherwise, you wouldn't have felt so much pain, you know, that you killed her.
You see, you are thinking for her. And all this interpretation, thinking for her, help to prevent her from growing. Right. This is exactly what we're trying not to do. We're trying to frustrate our patients. We want to force them to develop their own potential, to learn to stand on their own feet. So we try to give as little support as possible. This, if she doesn't know what happens, I don't know. I can only fantasize and might give completely misleading yeah. suggestions. What do you feel now? I still feel cut off. You feel cut off? From whom? From myself. I can't breathe. Uh, close your eyes and enter your body and give us exact detail how you prevent yourself from breathing. Can you take responsibility for what you're doing to yourself? I'm closing my throat. Yeah. I'm holding in my stomach. Tighten my mouth. Nodding of my stomach. What are you doing in your stomach? Nodding it up. Yeah. Excuse now, can you do all this, what you're doing to yourself, to your mother now? What could you do to me? Okay, that's as far as I want to go with this dream. I just want to say a bit more about, let's call it for the time being, the dream technique and the historical context. It, so to say, derives its source from two other psychiatrists. One is Morino in the psychodrama. The disadvantage of Morino's psychodrama is that he has to pull in other people. And then the role is falsified by the uniqueness of that other person. If I let the person himself or herself play the different roles, then we know we are at home. The other father of this technique is Carl Rogers. 
Well, first I have to say there's another difference between the Moreno technique and this one. Moreno usually confines himself to people. But there's so much invested in the objects. So if we make the objects alive, and I can't go now into the relationship to the deadness of a person, and again we have more material to assimilate. Now the other person is Carl Rogers, his feedback technique. Only I don't use just sentences for feedback. I feedback the experience. And make people listen to each other. There's no other choice. Fighting or listening. If the UN would listen instead of fighting, we would have peace. But who has ears, who listens, 